we're joined by David Odesnik. He's the Senior Fellow and Director of Research at the FDD. Thank you very much for being with us. And rights groups have complained about this scheme. They say that it is in fact less than voluntary. There is an element of coercion. Uh, yes, well, first of all, thank you for having me. I think it's somewhat hard to determine if the specific individuals who were returned in this first wave were coerced or not. I mean, given that there's 800,000 refugees, they may have found a, a few hundred who are willing to return. Uh, if we started to see movements at scale, it would certainly become much more suspicious. Uh, large numbers of people probably do not want to return, especially since there have been documented abuses, including torture of uh, refugees who've returned. Well, quite. Uh, is it safe for Syrian refugees to return, especially given that Bashar al-Assad is still in power? Uh, I think it's unlikely. I mean, if they, they fled because they feared the uh, the regime, it's unlikely they would want to return at this point. There's no policy of forgiveness or tolerance for those who fled the country. It's possible some merely fled because of the fighting and just were looking to avoid that. The uh, There is much less fighting now in central Syria. It's almost all in the north and in the northeast. So again, there could be a limited number of individuals who do want to come back. Uh, Lebanon has plunged into a terrible economic crisis the past three years. So the, the misery in Syria may not be much worse anymore than the misery in Lebanon. Well, quite. And, and conditions for Syrian refugees living in those camps has become simply intolerable, hasn't it? In the latest uh, sign of just how bad things are, a, a cholera outbreak, uh, many people affected, the World Health Organization uh, trying to get on top of that. Um, as you say, might it not be any worse in Syria? Well, that's right. I mean, presumably they wouldn't be living in a camp if they returned to Syria, although it's unclear whether they would have any sufficient housing. Um, of course, there's no global or international funding for reconstruction. Uh, Assad has never made it a priority to rebuild for anyone who doesn't support him and his regime. So, you know, it would be, uh, well, it's a question if those refugees even know what conditions are potentially like in their hometowns, whether they're making informed decisions and whether they have anything to go back to. Is this a, a failure of the international community to support uh, the, the many hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees who have had to leave the country? Well, the international community has given billions, but of course there's an ongoing problem. You have to support several million people year after year. Um, the countries that host them don't want to integrate them despite the low prospects of returning them. And of course countries that are not Syria's neighbors are hesitant to take the refugees. Europe took quite a large amount, and of course that has led to significant political instability there. So I mean, the real great failure of the international community is to resolve the Syrian civil war in any acceptable manner. The refugee problem is a symptom of that. David Odesnik, thank you very much indeed. Pleasure.